mean, if it means anything, it wasn't posted in like this, but I guess we can just keep it going. Call the house again. Tell them that the mouse is in. Yellow brick it, I split them O's up. You asked them out for men. Counsel that I'm probably not gonna melt this shit. It's common sense. Look at all this trouble that my filthy mouth and got me in. I'm stanky wrist, bank and switch, pocket tees with handkerchiefs. Used to see that glass half full. Started to drink the shit. Switching a little with Brenda when I was a baby. Still in the thank the picture. Philly nigga at the pot, the clock and Jada Pack and Smith. Welcome to Penn. My name is Jay Kang. I'll be your tour guide for today. I'm a rising senior uh, in the engineering school studying bioengineering and now that school's out I thought I'd give you guys a tour. Penn also has an interactive tour on the Penn website upenn.edu which is great for in-depth tours but I thought I would give you guys a quick glance of the campus. So quick facts about Penn. Penn was founded in 1740 by George Whitefield as a charity school and Ben Franklin and 24 trustees purchased the building and opened its door in 1751 to children of the gentry and the working class alike. Penn has a little over 10,400 undergrad students and a little over 11,000 graduate and professional students. So that's a quick spiel about Penn. And right behind you is the nation's first student union, Houston Hall. So this is Penn Commons. Formerly known as Wynn Commons. Yes, previously known as Wynn Commons. Yeah, that was a whole controversy. I'm sure the school doesn't want us talking about it. <laughs> but when I first came to Penn, it was a different name. I think Penn Commons suits it better. The nation's first student union. Now we're gonna head to the engineering quad where myself and, uh, and my friend filming this ravine spend most of our time <laughs> during school. So cool thing about the engineering quad is that it's centralized into this large cluster of buildings that's all interconnected as opposed to some of the college buildings. Um, I think it works great for collaborations across departments and interdisciplinary uh, education, right? <laughs> where all the pre-med students suffer through orgo labs and orgo lectures, I guess. If I die, it's because of you. <laughs> Keep you safe. I'm always in front of you. I'll get hit first. <laughs> Alright, so instead of listening to this dumb conversation between me and Ravine, I thought you guys might find it more helpful if I were to answer some of the questions you guys might have. One of the most frequently asked questions is about the class size, and obviously class sizes differ from course to course. Usually the lower level classes have a lot more students than the upper level courses, which is pretty logical. So you should expect to be in some of those bigger lectures your freshman year, but as you get through your Penn career, the classes should get smaller in size. And the important thing is that there are resources for every course, so you don't need to worry about getting the help you need to get through the class, because you'd have TAs, tutors, recitations, office hours, all of those things at your disposal. All right, some quick facts about Penn, because the video is about to interrupt us. Penn's football stadium, Franklin Field, is the first double-decker football stadium in the world and was the last place the Eagles won before they won the championship in 2018. And Penn's basketball stadium, the Palestra, has hosted more games, more visiting teams, and more NCAA tournaments than any other facility in college basketball. I have no idea this was called Smith Walk. Yeah, so that little path that we took 
was called Smith Walk apparently. So on to the next question. A lot of people ask about the Greek life on campus. 25% of all students are involved in Greek life, but that also means 75% aren't. Once you get on campus, you'll have more of a chance to see how things are for yourself. Personally, I was pretty against the entire Greek life situation freshman year, but after I came back from my two year leave of absence, I decided to join a frat. So, I mean, it's whatever floats your boat, honestly, and you won't really know for sure until you get here. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. So going off of Greek life, Another question a lot of people ask is about the social life at Penn. And although Penn is no state school when it comes to frat parties, I do think you would be able to find something to do every night of the week if you really wanted to. A quick non sequitur, the building you're looking at is called David Rittenhouse Laboratories, otherwise known as DRL. It's where most of the math and physics courses are, and it's a widely hated building because most freshmen need to take some sort of a math class and it probably happened in there. All right, back to the social life. There are always parties, BYOs, and Center City is really close. It's just like a 10 minute bike ride away or like a 20 minute walk. So if you're like of age or look really old like me, Center City's got really cool bars and clubs too. So I wouldn't really be worried about getting bored. Penn's a really fun campus and Philly is a great city. So you'll have plenty of fun. Welcome to the engineering side of campus. Um, this behind me is Kirkanich. Um, it's one of the many buildings that the engineering campus has, and it is the home to the bioengineering department, my department. Penn Engineering is one of the most competitive engineering schools in the nation. Is that true? That's not true. It's like top 20. Some notable aspects of Penn Engineering are the interdisciplinary um, learning, especially for bioengineering and senior design. Every senior graduating from the engineering school needs to complete a senior design project in groups that consist of three to five engineering students from any department. So personally, I'm a rising senior, so I just had to um, get together with my senior design group. Yeah, so I personally have a five member, five person group that's all in bioengineering, but usually um, there are groups that have members from different schools to complete the project. Some fun facts about the engineering school. The engineering curriculum has the most required courses on campus and understandably engineers spend a whole lot of time um, in this engineering complex. Another cool thing is that a lot of the students who study engineering at Penn choose to do dual degrees, either coordinated or uncoordinated. Some coordinated dual degree programs with the engineering school are the Viper program and the M&T program. If you guys are interested in it, you guys should check it out. The coordinated dual degrees um, significantly lessens the course load um, compared to the uncoordinated dual degree. The cameraman Ravine could tell you all about it. I'll uh, have him in for an interview, so stay tuned. Um, I'll have it on my channel. A lot of students come into engineering kind of knowing what major they want to pursue when they get here, but also a large proportion of the incoming freshmen come here undecided. I personally think there's merit in both ways. I think you should give it a hard thought before you get here because you do have to you do have to take a lot of courses to get the degree here. So check that out on the website. I will see you at College Green. Okay, to the right you have Hill College House. So Hill is one of the many freshman um, college houses. Some of the other freshman college houses you can expect to live in include W.E.B. Du Bois, Lauder, Kings Court English House, and the Quad, which include Fisher Hassenfeld, Reapy, and Ware. So my freshman year, a lot of the freshmen prefer to be in the Quad because of its location to other school buildings and because so many other freshmen would be around them. But since my freshman year, Hill has gone through a renovation and they built an entirely new college house called Lauder 
so now you guys have more of a choice as to where you'll be living so you could also take that into consideration when you put down your preferences all right what do i say here talk about benny i don't know anything about ben frank <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this is um, Ben right behind me, and behind Ben is College Hall. Um, College Hall is the most recognizable building on Penn's campus. It houses the admissions building, and it is the home to the School of Arts and Sciences, which we call the college. The college offers over 2,500 courses. It focuses on a strong liberal arts education. Yeah, and you know, like, it's a pretty building, so a lot of graduating seniors come here to take pictures, and there's a lot of um, green space around College Hall, and right across from College Hall is the Van Pelt Library, which is the main library on campus. A lot of student groups hold promotional tabling around this area um, when it's nice out, or when it's not nice out, which kind of sucks, but... College Green um, hosts a bunch of events, whether it's um, school sponsored or not. One of the biggest events that they host is Holy and um, the Students' Activities Fair, uh, which is located around College Green and continues up Locust Walk. This is also where convocation happens. I got one part of it down, the Ramakrishna one. I kid you not, I thought that was a chimpanzee. A regular soldier, know that they're trying to get rid of me. I'm rolling up the hole, I ain't got time for the sympathy. They love in the fantasy, I got them rough like a battle week. Ooh, oh, they love in the fantasy, I got them rough like a battle week. A battle week. A king of my throne, I'm all in my son, ain't no stopping me. Alright, so this is Huntsman Hall. Um, home of the Wharton School, the first collegiate business school in America. A lot of you are probably familiar with the Wharton name. So Wharton has the number one finance program in the world and is also the best undergrad business school. Fun fact about Huntsman Building. So they have these things called GSRs, which stand for group study rooms, that only Wharton students can book. Um, which I find very annoying and so does a lot of other people. I don't know how this would help in a campus tour video. Wharton also has a few coordinated dual degree programs which are LSM, m and and the Huntsman program. Um, they all each have their different um, fields of study so if you're interested in them you should check out their websites. Yeah and I mean there's Really nothing much to say about Warren. A lot of famous people went there, notably Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Warren Buffett before he dropped out, Tory Burch, and a bunch of other people. Well, let's go to the courtyard over there. That's about it. That's the extent of the campus. There's obviously a lot more to this campus than what was shown on screen. Most notably, the relationships you build on campus, which I think is arguably more important than the academic experience you get here. So personally, I'm a part of an acapella group called Pen Counterparts, a fashion magazine called The Walk Magazine, and a fraternity. I think the people you meet in class and in your clubs and in everyday campus life are the most important aspect of college life here at Penn. Without those friends to support me through the four years, I would definitely not have made it this far. Yeah, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. This was a campus tour of University of Pennsylvania and hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be coming back to you with another video of the campus real soon, so stay tuned. See you soon.